When we look at Meta as a company, they have three and a half billion active monthly users. Mo, why are you laughing at that? It's amazing. Any increase to me is a massive hill to climb. You know, I mean, you have half the globe. Okay, guys, Meta, commonly known as Facebook, has seen quite the fall from grace in 2022, right, Mo? So you have the chart pulled up. Look at that, a fall of what, 50-some percent? Yeah, and if you look at the five-year, look at that climb and then big fall. Even the five-year is down 23%. Yeah. So, guys, Meta is basically an advertising business, right? And we always laugh because when we pull up Meta stock and it hit a high of, what, 384, I think it was? Is that what the all-time high is? 384.33. On September 1st, 2021. This was merely 15 months ago. 15 months, 16 months ago, that's it. We're not talking about like 10 years ago. We're talking about 15 months ago. It hit a high of 384 and the low was recently of $88. That is a fall of almost 80%. Why? Well, first off, we started buying Meta, full disclosure. And again, don't buy any stock because we buy it. We're here to teach a process and we're here to talk about why you should do things. We're trying to teach you how to fish, okay? That's the main key here is we started buying Meta somewhere in the low, mid 200s, and I've dollar cost averaged, and I'm still down significantly on my Meta investment. However, when we look at Meta as a company, they have three and a half billion active monthly users. Mo, why are you laughing at that? It's amazing how the monthly usership goes up across all platforms, Facebook, uh, Not by much, though. Not by much, but... But also when you're looking at it and say three and a half billion, any increase to me is a massive hill to climb. You know, I mean, you have half the globe. You do have half the globe. You have almost half the globe there. Uh, I look at this thing to myself. Okay. The reason they fell so much is the lack of user growth. Everybody was like scared. Oh my God, the user growth and Apple changed their, how they're going to let people advertise. But here is Facebook's revenue per user over the last 10 years. Guys, look at this. Dollar thirty-eight, dollar fifty-four, two fourteen, two eighty-one, three. It keeps going up and up. Now, are you possibly telling me that with WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, that over the next ten years, these are all maybe they're going to be gone? They could be gone. I don't think they will. That's one. Two. The world has eight billion people in it right now. Mm -hmm. They have three and a half billion. The other four and a half billion who haven't logged on. This are these are a lot of people in developing countries that have a lot more revenue. Remember one thing. When you look at U.S. and Canada, look at the rest of the world. U.S. and Canada, revenue per, per person, $53.56. Look at the rest of the world. Europe is only seven, Europe's only $17 per user. $4 in Asia Pacific, $277 rest of the world. And this is for Q4 2020. We don't have uh, 2021 numbers yet. But look at it. And, and by the way, U.S. and Canada is how many people? I don't know. What's the population of Canada? If it's 30 million, we're talking about 360 million people out of That's only 10% of their users. 37 million. 37 million. So guys, only 10% of their users worldwide account for how big of a chunk of their, um, of their user revenue. And you can bet that when people start getting iPhones or Androids, whatever, what's one of the first apps they're going to download? It's going to be Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp. Instagram. <laughs> and you look at Asia Pacific, only it, it, they only get one in every, like it's, it's literally like 7% of their revenue per user mm -hmm. versus US and Canada. Do you see my point? So my point here is this. When my thesis on meta in general is, one, forget about the whole metaverse. I'm not even talking about the metaverse. It's a fun thing to, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. And if it doesn't happen, they're spending $10 billion a year on it. That's only going to boost the profit of the company. It's going to boost the value of the company. And they can afford to do that. And they can't afford to do that. But I look at meta and I think to myself, my God, I look at this data here and think to myself, Look at, forget about this. Look at this potential right here. Yeah. The rest of the world, the rest, the entire rest of the world, we're talking about 360 million people here and they have 3.5 billion users. This is 10% of their users. Look at all the potential here. That is my thesis on Meta. Could it, will it happen tomorrow? No. February 1st, they report earnings again. And by the way, if you want to hear our thoughts on earnings, things like that, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Because yes, we do go over quarterly earnings results. We don't focus on them in terms of, well, we want to sit there and see trends that they say, but definitely subscribe so you can see our updates on Meta come February 1st. When you look at the income statement, look at the revenue. The revenue in 2013, they didn't even do 7 billion. Now they're doing 118 billion. And then you go back to 2019, 66 billion. I mean, they've 
they are crushing it on revenue. But the point is, the stock is being punished. Revenue is still growing. Now, they took a profit hit. And well, I don't... revenue did decline in the third quarter of last year versus okay, so 2021. Quarterly, quarterly, it declined. And that yeah. can be a big, this is exactly what we mean. When we look at earnings reports and quarterly earnings, look for those price reactions to the negative. That gives us a good opportunity. Because I look at, say, I'm not interested in quarter to quarter data. Look at, if I'm looking at revenue, I want to see annual data growing. Correct. Now, I will say this. You have to look at 2021. We were still coming off of COVID. There were still a lot of restrictions on COVID. There were still, yes, we were almost back to normal. We were coming close, but we were still weren't back to normal. Is that part of it? Or is it a long-term trend of Facebook's revenue declining? I don't think it's a long-term trend. Do they have short-term issues? Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised to see revenue fall from these two numbers because this is a big jump from 2020 to 21. It's COVID. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see a decline there. So even if it declined, what are we talking about here? Look at this, guys. They're still talking about $20 billion in profit, yeah. even going back to 20, 2019 levels. Right. And the company is currently $355 billion at 17 to 1 with a lot more potential based on this. Remember, guys, when I look at a company, I ask three questions. One, do I think the company will be around for the foreseeable future? My answer on Facebook and Meta is yes. I think to myself, with three and a half billion users worldwide, it's going to be hard for somebody to come up there and replace them. Is that possible? Yeah, it's a tech world. It's social media. It can happen. Mm -hmm. Two, do I think this company in that foreseeable future will make more revenue, more profit in the long run? I do think that with Meta. I do absolutely believe that. In the short run, could it be hurt? Absolutely. But I think we're seeing that as part of the price decline. When you see a company go from $384 to a low of 88, and they're currently sitting at, let's say rebounded nicely, 136, it's still low here, okay? And the third question, can I pay a reasonable price today, factoring in that potential for the future to get an adequate return on my money? And that's where we sit here. We have to sit here and determine that. So first off, let's go to the eight pillars in the company. Is this a shock to anybody? It's not to me. We're talking about che eight checks all the way around. Now remember, this doesn't mean you go buy the company. Having eight, all eight green check marks on the pillars does not mean you go buy the company. It's a great starting point to say, oh, this is interesting. Let me see what the, I can determine about the future. Let's go to the analyst estimates. Now remember, keep analyst estimates with, a, you know, keep it as a grain of salt. I mean, I just look at it going, these analysts are completely biased. Brokerage houses are hired by the companies. It's, there's a lot of, I look at it as a way of saying, okay, what are analysts who are being bribed by these people saying, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of bias here, but they're still looking at 50% increase in earnings per share over the next five, four years. And revenue is not going to grow a ton, but it's still growing. So I look at it going, okay, it's something to consider, but I don't put a lot of weight into a lot of these things. It's just something to keep in my back of my head. Right, Mo? Yeah, I agree. And, All right. I, and, I, and also, you want to know what they're factoring in. Are they looking at the global growth? Are they thinking metaverse here? Are they looking at declines from COVID? Like, what's going through their head? Yeah, to me, the biggest thing is the bias. They have a bias yeah. of being hired by these companies. I mean, obviously, these investment banks do a lot of work with companies like Facebook. If Facebook wants to issue more debt or more stock, sure. they go to these investment banks. So there is a little bit of... Uh, you know, helping each other, scratching my back, which I don't like. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these analyst reports. Yep. But finally, stock analyzer tool. Guys, last year on our software, this was used 1.3 million times by our users, okay? So if you have an interest in the stock analyzer tool and everything you saw here, including our community with thousands of other people talking about these companies, go to everythingmoney.com, check it out. Remember, we have a money back risk-free guarantee. You sign up within 30 days, and for some weird reason you don't like it, money back, guaranteed, no questions asked. So, Mo, do you want to do the 10-year or 20-year analysis? I'll do the 10-year. Okay, now I'm going to do the 20-year analysis because Facebook, to me, Meta, to me, is the kind of company that, based on where it is today, I'd like to own for the foreseeable future. So I'm going to do a 20-year analysis. I'm going to be conservative in my low, middle, and high assumptions, even my high side. I'm going to sit there and say, okay, what do I see this company doing in the next 20 years? And is it selling for a reasonable price today? Yeah. So, you know, oh boy, you know, with inflation, Mo, inflation still helps these companies because it still drives up prices of, of advertising and things like that. And by the way, we're also seeing a slowdown in a lot of other areas. This, this revenue job could have been a slowdown just in economically because a lot of companies worldwide are foreseeing a, a recession. True. So, uh, so my return, I actually went a little more cons um, I say liberal than I usually do. 
How's so? Well, I usually put in 12, 14, and 16. I went 12, 13, and 14. It's funny you mention that. I still stuck with 12, 14, and 16. Actually, you know, I'm actually going to go, yeah, 12. I'm actually going to do 12, 15, and 18. Okay. So first off, revenue growth. Mo, what'd you do? Four, eight, and 12. Now, I think that was appropriate for a 10-year Ten number. Year, yeah. I did three, six, and 10. Now, guys, I actually believe three is absurdly low. Yeah. I think it's absurdly low. I think this company, just if they kept their user growth the same, yeah. they could grow their revenue higher and higher. Think about it this way. I mean, I, like print. I, just, I, was just, I was just talking to, a, to my future brother-in-law's sister, and she works at an advertising agency. And I said, hey, what do you do? She's like, well, I used to be in the print department. I ran the print department, but there's no more print anymore. So here's a woman that last 10 years ran the print department at an advertising agency, one of the biggest in Northeast Ohio. Right. And now she's like, yeah, I don't even do print anymore because it doesn't exist. But think about how much print is still out there that needs to be replaced. Yeah, and plus how many people numbers. are still... So I look and at three, six, and 10 gonna, saying... They're only going to get better. And I think this is low. Yeah. Profit margin, what'd you do? 24, 28, and 32. I did 25, 28, 31. Basically okay. the same thing. Yep. What'd you do for free cash flow? 24, 28, 32. I did the same 25, 28, 31. So what'd you do for PE? 14, 16, and 18. So I did 13, 15, 17. Same with the fright price of free cash flow because, you know, if this revenue growth yeah. is so low, I want to be more conservative. Okay. And desire return, I did 12, 15, 18. Yeah, 12, 13, 14. Yeah. So anyhow, the stock's currently at 136.98. So basically 137. I hit the analyze button. All right. Now it's on my watch list at 100. Doesn't mean I'm trying to buy it at 100. I just have a big enough position where if it falls below 100, that's where, you're that's where I justify going and getting more. But my low price is 130, high price of 200, mid price of 150. So it's still, the high price is still lower than my initial buy price, but yeah. I have this 18% return in here. That's true. Mine's 142 on the low end, 340 on the high end, and 220 in the middle. Holy cow. Now look at this. Yeah. If I change these all to 10. So what I'm doing here, guys, is remember, when you do your desired return, it's basically your margin of safety. And when people ask me, hey, Paul, how do you determine intrinsic value? Remember, this does not include the balance sheet. And the balance sheet for Meta is very, very good. They have plenty of cash on hand, a lot lower debt. But 10% to me is intrinsic value because over long periods of time, you should get 9 or 10% from investing in the stock market. So if you want what the company is worth, take a 10% return. So if I hit the analyze button, <laughs> look at this. Lots of green. I have 156 in the low end, 500 on the high end. Wow. So that's where I look at when I do a discount, that 18% discount over 20 years is a huge number. It drops from 504 to 200. That's what's going to give me my 18% return. Now, remember, this is still on the high side for assumptions for growth. 10% growth a year for 20 years is, what is that? Six, seven times revenue. That's a lot. So I'd take a big jump in revenue. But if Meta ends up being correct and they end up being the leader in the metaverse, did I say leader? Leader in the metaverse, this is what happens. I think the Oculus, it'll take off. It'll be a nice video game kind of. It's really fun. I have the NFL game, the boxing game. It's fun. I think meta, the metaverse makes a lot of sense. Now, yeah. in terms of selling real estate, I don't know about that. Uh, but see, in terms of having meetings and things like that, I think it makes a lot of I sense. The meeting stuff is going to be cool working. But the buying real estate, buying shoes, mm. buying Rolexes. I don't know about that one. Yeah, I don't know. So anyways, guys, if you guys like this, Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we do a great job. We do 15 to 20 videos a week. We're very dedicated to teaching a process in investing. The more you learn, the less you fear. Thank you very much, guys. There are three things that you absolutely need in order to be a successful investor. The proper mindset, the proper emotion, and the proper process. Which ones are the most important?